Right, I'm going to try and share two plans with everybody, um, and hopefully this will work, and then I will... Um, that's not working, is it? Nope. Share. That's that work. That's working, isn't that it? Is. Yep. Perfect. Uh, just pause. Yes. Now we've got the first plan up. Thank you. Thank you. So I don't have a PowerPoint. I don't have a dreaded PowerPoint presentation. I just have two plans to share with everybody. So just to begin with, I know uh, just to repeat slightly what uh, Anna has said. I know that many of you already know or are, are aware of a lot of what I'm about to say. But this is also for the benefit of those who may not know quite as much information. I'll try and keep things easy to understand, but if I stray too far into jargon, please let me know and I'll try and uh, not do that. I've got two plans to share with you. This is the first one. This first plan of the new town forms part of the district council's guide, planning guidance for the site. And this guidance was approved by the council in 2018. Hope that this plan is relatively simple to follow. And it, um, I don't have a bright laser pointer, sorry, I've just got a hand. Um, but this plan shows the broad extent. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. So it shows the village as well. Um, this plan shows the broad extent of, of um, the new town and the broad locations of certain facilities, such as shops and um, schools. So the orange circle shows the location of the schools. The bigger circle are the secondary schools, that one there and that one there. And the smaller circles show the location of the primary schools there, 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 and up here, and, there's all, and down here. And there's also a sixth form centre proposed down here, and a special educational needs school as well. The orange circles show the commercial zones, the town centre, the station quarter, an area called the Banald Quarter, and the Lake Quarter. <clears throat> I want to concentrate. This evening on updating members of the public on the western half of the new town, as this is where activity is currently concentrated. And what I've highlighted in a, with a thick purple line filled in in a purple fade, that is the area where development is currently concentrated. That's called phase one, key phase one. So the Ministry of Defence have outlined planning permission for the western half of the site. And this is for up to 6,500 dwellings and associated infrastructure. The granting of outline planning permission is where the principle of development is approved. The Ministry of Defence is the applicant, but Urban and Civic are the development partners. I'll use U and C as short and Urban and Civic, depending on, on, on what I'm using. Following the granting of outline planning permission, the applicant is then bound by planning conditions and legal clauses. The legal clause is known as a section 106 agreement. And these are designed to ensure that certain things are delivered at certain trigger points. And those trigger points relate to the occupation of numbers of dwellings. Those trigger points could be the first house, the hundredth house, whichever figure is used as a trigger. And those triggers are monitored by the district council and the county council. These triggers can relate to the provision of transport infrastructure, playing fields, playgrounds, schools, health centres, libraries, etc. And those are all the things that are, are to be delivered at certain times throughout the life of the development. What is important to know is that these triggers do not relate to commercial facilities such as shops or offices. One, and one of the first things that the developer did once outlined planning permission was granted was to apply for the approval of, very, of the various planning conditions that related to the outline planning permission. And these conditions required the applicant to provide certain additional information to the district council to be approved before development could start. These conditions included, for example, agreeing a plan for construction traffic to avoid the village, including where and when such traffic would go. So those that are familiar with the area, Construction traffic currently accesses the site from Denien Road up this route, and then also accesses the site from the roundabout near to the research park. 
It also included agreeing a plan for surface water and foul water drainage. And once these pre-commencement conditions were met, then this enabled development to begin. Development of a, of a size of this size is usually split into phases. And for the MOD part of the development, the first phase has been identified as containing up to 1600 dwellings. And that's the phase that I've highlighted in purple. There is no definition of how many phases there will be and how big a phase can be. Also, phases can overlap. So, so the last dwelling of phase one does not have to be finished before the second phase starts. But this is an issue for the second phase, will not be an issue for some time. To develop the first phase, the applicant has to make further planning applications to the district council. These applications are called reserve matters planning applications, and these are more detailed applications, and they can vary in size and importance. The first reserve matters planning application that was submitted was for the infrastructure for this area here. That, that planning application was approved in August 2020, and for the last 18 months or so, the delivery of this infrastructure has been is what has been mostly taking place on the site. In July of last year, I'm just going to move on to another page, actually, another plan, because this might be helpful. This plan is the, the this plan is this area in more detail as an extract from um, an indicative master plan for the site. And what I just want to show you is the first parcel the, in, in July last year, the first planning application for a residential development parcel was approved. A parcel is a name for a development area, whether that is for 50 or 100 or, or whatever figure for a development for, of houses. This first parcel was for 89 dwellings and development has started. And this is the parcel that I'm just highlighting with a red, with a red marker here. So development has started on that site. Another planning application for 111 houses has also been approved, and that's this area here. Other planning applications will be submitted later this year, either for housing or for other facilities that will be required to meet the legal requirements or planning condition requirements. Let's go back to this plan here. This is my last comment to make. Um, the eastern half of the site is a separate planning application um, from a company called RLW. Um, this application went to planning committee in January last year with a resolution to approve subject to the signing of the Section 106 agreement. The Section 106 agreement is being drafted and will be published in due course. That concludes my presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Mike. And I hope that fills in some introductory detail for um, people who may not be so familiar with the um, project as, as others are. So um, are there any questions, Sharon? So there's only one question in the questions and answers box at the moment. So Mike, um, I'll ask this to you, but I appreciate you may need some support from Matt Clark uh, representing RLW. And I know we've also got Paul van der Belk on the um, call from um, GCP. So um, those may want to chip in as well. So Mike, to you first. Um, from Nigel C. Marks, interesting to see the train station mentioned. When is the train station opening? So, the in terms of the in terms of the train station, um, members of the public might be aware that when the eastern half of the development went to planning committee back in January of last year, there was a condition that was um, attached to the resolution. And that condition required that the, by, by the first home to be occupied on the eastern half of the development, um, the railway station needs to be open, up and running. So in, in the same way that I said earlier on that trigger, uh, triggers tend to reflect occupations or numbers of houses rather than dates, the trigger is the first occupation of, that, of the first dwelling on the eastern half of the development. It's not a date, it's a trigger. So that means it's more, that, that, that gives greater power in a way from the authority to say it has to be delivered by then. Thanks Mike, that's very useful. Um, so we've got another question this time to do with construction access. 
So from David Test, can you comment on the construction of a further construction access to the north of the research roundabout? So um, a, a planning application was approved um, last year for a, a main construction access just where my pointer is. And this is planned to take construction away. If, if, if you remember, I said before that the construction access, where one of the main construction accesses comes through here, but eventually all of this area will be developed for housing. And what we don't want is construction access going through this area in the same way that we don't want construction access going through the village. So by putting a construction access to the north of the site, that, that preserves the opportunity to have no construction access going through this development as, it, as it's built out. And Urban Civic will be able to, to maybe talk about that a bit more in their, in their presentation. Thanks, Mike. So next question from Andrew Cotton has, and we're back to the railway station, has the funding for the railway station been resolved then? And again, um, conscious that you may need some support from Paul and Matt on this update. Yeah, I, th I think it might, um, I mean, the, the section 106 um, agreement or the section 106 drafting for the RLW application is currently being drafted and um, this is an issue in that section 106 agreement. The GCP have, have been involved in, in that process as well. I don't know if Paul wants to add anything or whether Matt wants to add anything at this point. Hi, oh, it's Paul here. So no, I don't really have anything to add. My, my, my understanding is that the discussions between the transport director at the GCP and RLW are still ongoing. Yep. regarding uh, delivery of the station. Uh, but it would be interesting to see if Matt has anything to say. Um, hi, yeah, sorry, can you hear me? Yep. Yes, we can. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I haven't got a great deal to add to that, to be honest with you. I mean, I think Mike captured it, it you know, it's it's some um, ongoing discussions in the context of the, um, of the Section 106 agreement, really. Thanks, and a related question from Nigel C. Marks, railway station, is the GCP planning funding of £10 million or more? I, I couldn't answer that. I think that's one for Paul. Yeah. Yeah, as I, as I previously said, uh, there's no, the, the plans haven't been resolved yet and uh, the GCP is in discussion with ROW. So there's nothing, I can't answer that question. Okay, um, I think that's as much as we can do in terms of the update on the funding of the station. Um, Councillor Bradnam, I'm aware we've got a couple of participants with raised hands. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Okay, so let me just have a look. Um, uh, right, okay. So, um, Kate Grant, then, would you like to ask your question? Is Kate being unmuted so she can ask her question? Uh, yes, Kate, if you, um... Oh, there is a button. Is that that? Can yes. you hear me now? That's it. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, I think we all know after the COVID crisis, et cetera, that people need green space. And although there is green space within the development, it is really rather streamed out and on the edge. And in particular, it rather seems as if all the sports grounds and big areas are going to be around the schools. We were told there were going to be um, playing fields, etc. at South Park. There doesn't seem to be much space for a significant recreation ground that isn't part of a school which often has constraints on when it's open, because many schools do not open during the holidays. So um, would that be for Mike Huntington or would it be for uh, Urban and Civic? I, I think it might be one for Urban and Civic, other than to say where it says South Park, my understanding is there's going to be a cricket pitch there, at least. 
Um, but that'd be, I think maybe Caroline or Rebecca might be best place to, to, to talk about that. Thank you. I can't see any other hands raised, Councillor Bradnam, at this moment, but we've got a couple more questions in the Q&A box. So I'm going back to those. So from Jane Williams, what stage of negotiations are RLW at with Network Rail to enable the station to be built? So I think that's one for Matt Clark. Um, yeah, hi. Um, yeah, I mean, it's the, the, the scheme has been progressing through the, um, the GRIP um, process, uh, and I think it's reached GRIP 3B. Um, I'm, I'm not aware of it progressing further uh, than that, but then, um, as, as Mike touched on earlier, you know, the, the, the process of actually commencing development of the station um, will, will follow in due course. Um, so, yeah, I've got no update on, on the, the GRIP sign-off process be, beyond that. Okay, thank you for that. Um, and then from David Test, how will the construction of the additional construction access fit in with the improvements to the A10, which is being planned by the Joint Authority? I don't know if um, if you can have an initial stab at responding to that, Mike. Well, um, what I can say is if, if there is a lot of change to the A10 in that particular corridor um, wh where the research park is, then there would have to be a whole road designed in, but we don't actually know where the A10, I mean, it's difficult to know when the A10 works are gonna happen. Uh, there's, no, there's no time frame for the A10 works to, to take place. Thank you, Mike. And I'm very conscious that um, we need to move on to the next item. So what we will do, is we will come back to the remaining questions in the chat box at the end of the next item. We'll have time to respond to these during the course of the meeting.